for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi guys and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report for Friday, May 25th, 2018. There's a lot going on. I've been fishing two different lakes uh, on two different lakes the last two weeks. Last week it was, what lake was it? It seemed like a Lake Levon. It seemed like a hundred years ago now. This week was Bridgeport. Last week was good. This week was bad. I just take one day. It's all I've got now during the week to actually get out and go hit these lakes that I've not been on hardly ever, if ever, before. Um, I did have the, the good luck last week of catching a water body record on Levon of a 14 and a half pound buffalo. And as you know, buffalo are not carp, they're their own subspecies or whatever you want to call it. I'm not a scientist. You probably already realize that. Anyway, that was a good day. Found the fish. Um, then last week, also, I took out a recent Texas A&M graduate, Marty, uh, to warm him up on carp before he spent this week, which he's not back yet, but he's uh, actually in the Bahamas bone fishing. So we're going to find out in the future episodes how the two compare between bonefish and carp on Lake Ray Roberts, Texas, which is like a far stretch to say the least. But let's move on. Quit talking about me. Let's talk about what's going on through the rest of the state and what that is on salt, where I always like to start and finish. There's a lot of action on the jetties right now with sheephead, sheep's head, if you want to call them that. Both names count. Drums and reds. You're looking at the jetties right now, and what you can do is tie your flies for that. You can't buy these. I've never seen them. A lot of, lot of natural colors, um, greens with gold, with gold flash. You got to use gold, gold eyes, gold flash. It helps a lot to, to saltify a typical clouser. And you want those to get down. And, and actually, when you find sheep's head, they're really in close to the rocks. So it, it becomes challenging in a lot of ways for fly fishers. Uh, one thing you've got to do is manage your line on the jetty. And the way I do that is take a big old beach towel and just get it wet when I hit, get to the spot I want to be in and lay that towel down. It's wet so it won't blow away and let strip your line onto that. It's the simplest, easiest way when you're done, wring out that towel. You might have to keep wetting it because it might dry out and blow away. So keep wetting the towel and that will cover your spot where you're stripping into. So that's the jetties. Texas Gulf Coast jetties is going on. Part two of that, what I'm seeing uh, in reports and things on the Texas Gulf Coast, on the inland side, uh, the inshore side, is that right now is prime time for shallow, shallow redfish and speckled trout, and you can even find sheep's head out in the flats. Very difficult, very difficult quarry there, um, and. That only goes on for so long until it gets too hot, and I think it's going to get hot a lot quicker. I mean, it's super hot here already in North Texas. We've skipped over the spring, and we're now headed straight towards summer with high humidity and high temperatures, about 10 degrees above average. So it's tough right now. And it's tough for me on the flats because these, it's hard to, to go all day and then go the next day and go all day, too. It's basically a day pulling the skiff on the flats and then a day, day of recuperation. If you get into fresh water, you know, you know that in most of the population is close to fresh water in Texas, closer to fresh water than salt water. Right now, we're in the post-spawn eat for bass. If you're after bass and you like bass on fly, what I'm seeing in interpolating from from the reports on TPWD scroll which will be at the end of this is that big baits are going now which means for us as fly fishermen we we switch over from for temporarily from bait patterns to worm patterns and what I use and like is a double bunny which is, is two rabbit strips and it's tied as big as a worm they're really challenging to cast, but if you can figure out how to cast them, and they're weighted at the bottom, pretty heavily weighted, so they get that jigging action. And, but that tail, when that starts fluttering on a, on a, on a fresh bunny fly, um, 
I've caught big and usually don't catch small, any small largemouth bass. So that go to that type of fly for freshwater right now to catch bass and I think you'll have some luck. Another thing you can do is it, as it really starts to heat up early and late top waters, there's a fly that I make, it's called the copperhead and it's basically a copy of a snake. And if you don't think Big bass eat snakes, you're wrong. They do eat snakes off top. And uh, I'll try and do a, a fly tying video for that itself because it's a really neat fly and the top water action is, I've caught big bass on top with that copperhead fly. Um, let's see what else I've got. The reason you want to get out on the salt right now, if you can get out and wade the flats, is because as it heats up the, the fish will come off the flats and they will go into the guts and that makes it just that much harder so you'll have the action won't be all day long anymore regardless of tide regardless of moon um, and that and that variation or variable what will happen is the heat gets so intense during the day that the fish will come off the flats and drop into the guts and that just makes it a lot harder fishing because uh, you're not sight casting for them anymore and they're not shallow, there's fewer shallow fish because they're, they're trying to cool off during the heat of the day. So it, it throws one extra variable in there when the heat kicks in, Texas style. And when it kicks in, and it won't be long, maybe a month, maybe less, because it's so hot now already. The one good grace we've had here in Texas lately is that the wind has finally quit. So only noise you hear is my fan going trying to keep me from sweating to death but otherwise um, it's really been a a really really hot spring it just kind of skipped the spring and that's pretty much what I have to say about fishing I'm kind of in a hurry got a lot of things to do I've got to go down I'm an ambassador for TFO now and I've got to go down and pick up a fly rod and hopefully we'll do a review of that. It's the Axiom 2. They've been out for a while, I know, but um, I haven't seen many reviews and I haven't really, I haven't had one, so I'm going to get one and put it on a fish next week and see how it does. I've got a guided trip and a couple more trips next week. It's going to be very busy because this is a holiday weekend. You know, the last word to you on getting out on Texas water this weekend is if you can avoid it, don't go. Uh, the holiday weekends in Texas are pretty much a, a a SO, so to speak, you can fill in the blank there, and they don't, uh, there's a lot of death and, and mayhem going on on lakes for sure, and then uh, on the coast you get a lot of people that yahoos out there burning up the flats, so that's not good either. Um, this is the one time they get to get away is on a three day weekend and they really tear it down bad, so if you can avoid it, please avoid it go out there during the week or another weekend the weekend after it's, things are still settling down after this insane week we're getting weekend we're getting ready to have but but it's still better than going out on a holiday weekend other than that have a great weekend I uh, hope that you guys take these reports for what they're worth and what they cost and in the uh, future Go to www.texasflycaster.com to get all the information you need about fly fishing in Texas. Book a trip with me. We're at the very height of the carp season right now, which means that um, if you took my season on a curve, we're at the top of the curve, and it'll stay, it'll stay at a flat high for about another month, and then the heat kicks in on the carp here too, and, and that makes things a little more challenging. So you got a lot to look forward to, of course, with the uh, with the review of the the TFO. That's that little doggy that used to be sitting up here. Uh, Axiom two, and we've got to tie a couple of flies to show you while they're still hot to be hot to trot for bass, and then um, of course, if you tune in to the end of this, you'll see some photos that I I have from my trip. And then some photos that were sent in. I don't know if anybody. Yeah, I got a couple photos sent in this week by other um, fly fishermen, basically in Houston. There was a. And also, what I'll do at the end is run the scroll of the of the two results for the two fly fishing tournaments. One was in Houston, the carp, the carp 
tournament and then the one at, I'll run the results also for the uh, bass tournament the world championships on Lake Fork I'll just scroll those in there too that way you can see the results on that I don't have to sit there and paste it into the story uh, you know the backup to these reports is the website www.texasflycaster.com subscribe to the YouTube channel and you will get a notification anytime a new video comes out it's hard to tell when they're going to come out right now, whether it's going to be a week or two weeks in between because of all the fishing that's going on during the week. And I don't fly fish on the weekends in Texas if I can help it. Thanks for watching. Have a great holiday weekend. Stay inside if you can. Go outside if you have to. And if you do catch fish, please, please, on fly, please send those photos to me at 940-380-0408 put it in another language 9403800408 and I will accept those text photos from you and be glad to post them on my next video thanks for watching